Hey guys, I have had the pleasure of getting acquainted with Scott Crosby, who is just one of the premier tires in this area. He just ties beautiful flies. Some of his smaller intruders, trout space stuff is just amazing. And I talked him into making a video for this channel about flies that fish big and cast easy and tie relatively easy. So I hope you enjoy this and I appreciate Scott for helping me out and uh, tying up a real winner here. So thank you for watching and appreciate Scott for coming on. Good evening and welcome back to part two of easy to cast and easy to tie flies for the line speed Jedi. Tim Rollins has asked me to come in and Share how easy it is to tie one of these hobo spades. So, let's get started in the interest of time. I've only got a small window to make sure I hit the YouTube 15-minute limit. So, let's get started on it. I've uh, kind of jumped ahead a little bit here. I've got a 25-millimeter Waddington shank. A 30-pound uh, Berkeley Crystal Fireline. A number 2 Aquaflies Talon Hook. The best hook on the market. Aquaflies Ultra Tubing. Now this isn't in the original pattern from Charles St. Pierre, but I like the way it holds the hook, so I added it to it. It's my own little twist. And then we're going to come in and we're going to add a piece of pink guinea. Tie it in. <clears throat> now I'm going to dress the body with either my uh, dubbing of my choice or chenille. And for the in the interest of time... We're going to use chenille this evening. Just going to dress that all the way to the front, right in front of that dubbing ball. Don't crowd your head too much. Leave yourself a little bit of room to work with on the head. That might be a half an inch worth of chenille body. Okay. Now I'm going to come in here and spin this piece of guinea hen. Make sure you stroke it all back and palm it forward just like you would a woolly bugger. When you select your feather for this, make sure you try and use a stem that's relatively thin and long. It just helps with the wrapping of the material. Capture it. Get that out of there. Take your scissors and come in. Now, I am kind of going fast here, and I promise that we're going to come back as soon as I can get my window on YouTube to change to longer than 15 minutes. We'll we'll spend some time with the details and the whys of a, why I do a lot of things and why, you know, just the whole overall, uh, just more detailed video. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in our first piece of marabou. I have three colors selected. I like the multiple colored ones. You can do just one color. It doesn't matter. The um, great thing about fly tying is it's totally up to you. Um, one thing I quickly forgot, and all of a sudden it is missing, yes, is this small piece of tubing to go on the hook. These talon hooks from Aquaflies are so sharp. It just it takes two seconds. Put it on. Trust me. Come in here with your first piece of marabou. <clears throat> Remember, your thins, your stems need to be very thin and long. And you don't have to. You can put as many wraps in here as you want, but I highly suggest that sparse is no farce, and um, just a few. You probably should, if you have multiple colors, maybe build it three wraps, two wraps, one wrap. That looks really good a lot of the time. Um, you don't want it to bulk up to where you just got a big old wad of marabou on this thing. When you, when you go to spin these pieces of marabou, make sure that you are delicate and have some dexterity going on. If it comes out like that, no big deal. Just start over. It just slipped out on me. I didn't secure it good enough because I was kind of in a rush here, which I shouldn't be, but I am. What a beautiful day in Oregon here today. It was 74 degrees on my front porch. Okay.
we're going to just be stroking that back and wrapping it forward, palmering it forward. Don't pull too hard because that stem, if you picked it out right, is nice and thin. And your materials are rather wispy. Okay, three. This one's going to be four, maybe even. Yeah, four. Oh, that's five. Come over here, capture it. Okay. Get rid of those hackle players. Come in here and trim that stem out of there. Okay. Make sure you take your toothbrush and make sure nothing's trapped before you get into the next color, which is going to be red in this case. I've got these all pre-done up. I'm tying them in at the tip. You can see about how much I have there. Secure it. Wrap it back to the where the yellow stopped. Take that stem, come over the top, secure it as well. You can snap this out of here with your fingers, but I really don't like to do that. I like to rather, I'd rather cut them myself personally. I see guys that are tying for a qual quantity uh, do that. Okay. One thing, little tip here. See how the thread is starting to wrap around that old material or the other material, the yellow? We want to get that out of there. And then we want to get that thread all the way up to the front out of the way so it doesn't do that. Okay. One. This stroking process is really critical because you just want to make sure you're not trapping any materials. Because trap materials don't move as well. And let me tell you, this marabou has some great action when it's not trapped. And that action of that marabou could be the trigger and the difference between a fly that gets bit and one that doesn't. Okay, I'm just stroking that all back. We're up to the top. We're going to secure it with a securing wrap. Sorry for my hand being in the way. Okay, back around a few securing wraps. Now, before we tie on the last color, and I'll keep you in suspense on what that color is, out of there, we're going to put a few things in. The first thing we're going to put in is some crinkle flash, two pieces, right on the side. Okay. Halfway point of half a hank. Remember, any flash that you tie in, if you tie it in heavy and lots of it, you can always trim it out on the river later. But if you don't have it in there to begin with, you can't get rid of it. You can't, or pardon me, you can't add it later. All right, so two on each side. That's awesome. Now we're going to come in with my favorite, Lady Amherst. Yeah, look at the size and the beautiful plume I have received from my good buddy Nakamura Tesentio over from Japan. He owns Anglefield Fly Supplies. And let me tell you, he is the price and the quality of that Lady Amherst is the best I've seen. I'll just say that. Okay, now. Let's tie in some Lady Amherst. We're going to go two pieces at a time, and we're going 360. This is how I do it. Lay it on there where you want it. Here's a little tip. See how this is starting to get wispy and in your way? Lick your fingers. Stroke it back. Get it right out of your way. It will be a pain in the butt. If you don't do this tip. Remember this is easy to tie fly. So that trick makes it easy. You lay your two pieces of Amherst on there. One wrap. Let go. Turn the fly towards you. One wrap. Let it go. Turn the fly towards you. One wrap. Let it go. 
turn to fly towards you. One wrap. Let it go. Turn to fly towards you. And all the way around you want to do this. Now, if you have a barren spot, which you shouldn't, by going 360 like this, you can fill it in with a couple extra pieces. This actually worked out just fine. Okay, secure them. Stroke them back and secure them. Everything is 360 on that. That's good. Looks great. Okay, secure them a few times. Ain't going anywhere. Now, we need to add the last piece of marabou. We're going to put a piece of fuchsia pink on there. So I have yellow, red, fuchsia pink. Wrap that back. Cut that stem out of there. You don't want to leave the stems in. They hinder action. Okay, grab that. Now remember, these thin stems, you have to have some gentleness and dexterity. And let me tell you folks, that is a tough one for me. Because I'm a rather... I'm a bull in a china shop kind of guy. Okay. Just ask my good old buddy John Hazlett. He'll tell you. Okay. Now, one last piece of material after we... Comb this all out. Let's put a half hitch in there so that when we're combing it, we don't have to worry about anything coming undone. Half hitch. Boom. It's ready. It's secured. Just going to kind of take a look and look at make sure everything's nothing's trapped. Looks great. This thing's going to be sick in the water. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to see this. All right. Here we go. The last material we're going to add. I actually, this is the seventh time trying to do this video for Tim. The sixth time it came out, and it was under 15 minutes, but I forgot to put the flash on the top. So I couldn't do it. I just couldn't post it without it. So I'm grabbing, I don't know, there might be eight pieces of this Fuchsia Holographic Flashaboo. Half a hank. And I'm going to find a little more than the center point, because I want the bottom to be longer and the top to come in and fold and lay it in on top and give me a taper. So if I come in here, go right directly, turn your vise so that your fly is directly on top and you can take that flash. I'm going to add a little water to it because it's wanting to come apart on me. That helps too on flash. A little spit. Okay, there we go. That's awesome. Now I'm going to walk my thread all the way back to where the marabou ended. Secure that flash. Take this piece of flash up here, these pieces, and fold it right over the top, right down the center of the shank. Okay, I am done with this fly other than building my head. So I'm just going to take my pink thread and cover up all the flash. Come in here. And as I build my head, right before I kind of finish my head, I'm going to put a little Zappa Gap on it. Okay. Just a tiny little bit. Holds those threads in place. Come in here and finish it. Work it to the front. Come in here with my whip finishing tool. One, two, three, four. That'll do you. You need to take some head cement and put it on this head and it will make sure that it fishes for much longer if you do that. Okay, I've got a minute and a half or so to tell you a couple things. One, thanks for joining us. Two, I heard it said from Josh Mills the other day and I thought it was a great thing to do, especially in this crazy COVID time we're doing. When's the last time you packed up a bunch of flies, didn't even ask your buddy and just sent them out to him? Remember, it's better to give than receive. And secondly, let's take care of the fly shops, online orders. Let's take care of those people who take care of us in good times as well as bad. Okay, thanks a lot. Have a good day.